طلاب المرحلة الخامسة السلام عليكم ورمضان كريم Our lecture today about UVITIS The uvia, which is the second coat of the eyeball is a pigmented vascular ocular structure consisting of the iris, ciliary body and coral It supplies blood to most of the eye from anterior to posterior ciliary branches of the ophthalmic artery Uveitis could be infectious, like bacterial, viral, fungal, and parasitic, or non-infectious with and without a non-systemic association or neoplastic inflammation. There are over 30 diseases which are featured by intraocular inflammation of uveitis. Few definitions. Uveitis implies an inflammation as we say, infectious or non-infectious of the uveal tract and to lesser extent the retina and its vessels. Anterior uveitis may be iritis or iridocyclitis. If the inflammation is restricted to the iris, refer us to uh, iritis. If the inflammation to the iris and the bar supplicata of the ciliary body in iridocyclitis. Intermediate uveitis inflammation of the pars plana of the ciliary body, peripheral retina, and the vitreous. The posterior uveitis referred to retinitis, choroiditis, and vasculitis. Pan uveitis means inflammation of the entire uveal tract. Endophthalmitis means inflammation of all intraocular tissue except the sclera. Pan ophthalmitis refer to inflammation of the entire globe. This picture shows the anatomical classification of uveitis according to the site of inflammation. Here is the anterior uveitis. This is intermediate uveitis and posteriorly mean posterior uveitis. Clinical feature of uveitis. The anterior uveitis is the most common form of uveitis and presented with unilateral pain and redness. It's sign like circumcorneal conjunctival injection, hypokin, meiosis, keratic precipitate, aqueous cells, and posterior synechia. This picture shows the keratic precipitate here, and this is the posterior synechia. Posterior uveitis may be presented with a blurred blurring of vision or flutters. It's sign like focal or multifocal whitish retinal opacities or round yellowish choroidal nodule or very arteritis and very plebitis. This picture shows multifocal choroiditis. Note intraocular pressure may be reduced in uveitis as a result of impaired of the aqueous secretion by the ciliary epithelium or may be elevated due to variety of mechanism including therapeutic steroid used in the treatment. Investigations. Investigations are often negative with no clear underlying cause determined in many patients with uveitis. Investigations like HLA testing, syphilis serology, chest x-ray for tuberculosis, or many other tests indicated only if, first, a granulomatous inflammation, second, recurrent uveitis, third, persistent, chronic, or resistant to treatment, four, bilateral disease, fifth, Severe acute presentation like anterior uveitis that associated with intermediate or posterior uveitis. Six, systemic manifestations without a specific diagnosis. Lastly, confirmation of the suspected ocular picture. Treatment of uveitis in general. First, mediatic and cycloplegic like atropine or tropicamide drops to promote comfort and to prevent or break posterior synechia. Second, steroids. 
steroid can be used as a topical or very ocular intraocular and systemic steroid as anti-inflammatory topical steroid used for six weeks initially and frequently used or frequently applied maybe even every two or one hour then gradually tapering of treatment third treatment non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may be effective in case of a chronic anterior uveitis which can be used for a long term with a precaution fourth immunosuppressive agent like anti-metabolite and cyclosporin or immunomodulatory therapy these treatment used when other measure fail to control inflammation or as a steroid sparing measure alternative to steroid fifth antimicrobial like antibiotic may be used in case of tuberculosis uveitis we use anti-tuberculosis and antiviral agent this antimicrobial or antiviral used for specific type of uveitis as we said before there may be about over than 30 diseases may cause uveitis this picture show the midriatic drop or cyclobigic drop anterior uveitis causes maybe hla b27 and spondyloarthropathies like ankylosing spondylitis writer syndrome and psoriatic arthritis or juvenile idiopathic arthritis uveitis in bowel diseases like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease uveitis in renal diseases like tubulointerstitial nephritis and immunoglobulin a glomerulonephritis sarcoidosis may cause anterior and posterior uveitis behjet syndrome also may cause anterior and posterior uveitis toxoplasmosis and tuberculosis both may cause anterior and posterior uveitis herpes simplex virus and herpes zoster virus fox uveitis syndrome and lens induced uveitis all are causes of anterior uveitis this picture show the level of hypobian which is, which mean bus in the anterior chamber and here is a posterior sinusa which is which are a signs of anterior uveitis intermediate uveitis Intermediate uveitis insidious, chronic relapsing disease in which the vitreous is the major site of inflammation of inflammatory signs in which there is a snow banking or snowball formation. Intermediate uveitis accounts for up to 15% of all uveitis cases and about 20% of pediatric uveitis. The condition is typically bilateral and often asymmetrical. Vitreous cell with anterior predominance are universal in all cases of intermediate uveitis. In majority of cases, the disease is severe and have a prolonged course and may complicate it to cystoid macular edema. Note: An insidious onset of a blurred vision accompanied by vitreous flutter, without pain, without redness, suggests a possible diagnosis of intermediate uveitis. This picture shows the snow banking formation in case of intermediate uveitis. Posterior uveitis causes may be sarcoidosis, Behjet syndrome, toxoplasmosis, toxic, toxicara, HIV or AIDS virus, cytomegalovirus retinitis, presumed ocular histoplasmosis syndrome, endogenous fungal endophthalmitis, tuberculosis, syphilis, Koyonaji, Harada syndrome, and sympathetic ophthalmia. This picture shows the vasculitis in case of posterior uveitis. Now we will discuss a few uh, examples of a common cause of uveitis in our country. First, uh, we will discuss uveitis in HLA-B27 spondyloarthropathies. 90% of patients with acute anterior uveitis who have an associated spondyloarthropathy, most notably ankylosing spondylitis. The acute anterior uveitis here is typically unilateral, severe, recurrent, and associated with higher incidence of posterior synechia and fibrinous exudate in the anterior chamber. Acute anterior uveitis is presented in the third to fourth decade. 
and closing spondylitis mean inflammation, calcification, and finally ossification of the ligament and capsule of the joint with resultant bony and chirosis of the axial skeleton. Reiter syndrome is a triad of non-specific non-gonococcal urethritis, conjunctivitis, and arthritis. Psoriatic arthritis mean well demarcated salmon pink skin area covered with thick silvery flax. This picture shows the ankylosis of patient with ankylosing spondylitis or HLA-B27. Other common example of uveitis in our country, Behjet syndrome, mean idio, uh, idiopathic multisystemic disease characterized by recurrent episodes of orogenital ulceration, skin lesions like erythema nodosum and vasculitis. Mortality in Behjet syndrome around 5% at 5 years, typically due to cardiovascular or CNS complications. The disease typically affects patients from Eastern Mediterranean region and Japan with a lower prevalence in Europe and America. It's strongly associated with HLA-B51, the peak age of onset in the third decade, male are affected more frequently than female. Note, eye disease or the ocular feature are typically occur within two years of oral ulceration and usually bilateral and frequently associated with a transient mobile hypopian in a relatively white eye, which called cold hypopian, and may be associated with retinitis, retinal vasculitis, and vitritis. This picture show oral ulceration in patient with Behjet syndrome. Other example, toxoplasmosis, this type of parasitic uveitis caused by toxoplasma gondii and obligate intracellular protozoa. It is estimated to infest at least half of adults in Mediterranean and tropical countries. The cut is the definitive host while livestock and human are the intermediate host. Mod of a human infection either by ingestion of undercooked meat or ingestion of contaminated food with cat litter or transplantal congenita. Note, the diagnosis of toxoplasma retinitis is based on a compatible fundus lesion, solitary inflammation, inflammatory focus or focal retinitis near an old pigmented scar with severe vitritis, discernible headlight in the fog appearance. In addition to positive serology for toxoplasma antibody, any titer is significant. And the picture here show the toxoplasma retinitis. This is the active lesion and this is the area of all the scar infection, scar of old infection. Tuberculosis also a common type of uveitis. It's a chronic granulomatous infection caused by the tuberculous bacillus. Tuberculosis is primarily a pulmonary disease but may be uh, spread by blood stream to other sites of the body. Tuberculous uveitis or TB uveitis may be difficult to diagnose because it may occur in patients without systemic manifestation of tuberculosis, which means just ocular TB. The diagnosis is therefore often, uh, is therefore often presumptive based on indirect evidence such as intractable uveitis unresponsive to steroid therapy and positive history of contact and positive skin test. Anterior uveitis is common and usually granulomatous. Iris nodule may be present and broad posterior synechia may form. Vitritis is very common and cystoid edema with the choroid tubercle or multifocal choroiditis has increasing, uh, increasingly been recognized. Our reference in this lecture is Tanisky textbook. Thank you for listening.